Why does amiodarone cause both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism? This is one of the most bizarre high yield drug paradoxes you need to know for the USMLE. So I'll ask you first. Amiodarone is 37% iodine by weight. So why would flooding someone with iodine cause their thyroid to shut down in some patients but go into overdrive in others? Let's start with hypothyroidism. When you give massive iodine, normal thyroids have a protective response called the wolf chaikov effect, which means temporarily shutting down hormone synthesis to prevent overproduction. Most people escape this effect after a few days, but patients with underlying Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroiditis can't escape, so they stay hypothyroid. That's myodarone induced hypothyroidism. Now let's talk about amiodarone induced hyperthyroidism, and there's two types you need to distinguish. Type 1 hypothyroidism caused by myodarone happens in patients with underlying thyroid diseases like multinodular goiter or subclinical graves. Their abnormal thyroid uses the iodine load as substrate to overproduce hormones. This is a jode based phenomena, meaning iodine induced hyperthyroidism in a gland already primed to go haywire. Type 2 hyperthyroidism due to amiodarone happens in previously normal thyroids. Amiodarone is directly toxic to follicular cells, causing destructive thyroiditis that releases preformed hormone into circulation. The thyroid isn't making new hormone, it's spilling stored hormone because cells are being destroyed. Now some students will say, how do I tell type 1 from type 2? Here's the key, radioactive iodine uptake. Type 1 has high uptake because the thyroid is actively synthesizing and needing iodine. Type 2 has low uptake because it's leaking stored hormone, same pattern as subacute thyroiditis. Treatment follows the mechanism. Type 1 gets thionamides like methimazole to block synthesis. Type 2 gets glucocorticoids to reduce inflammatory destruction.